Now, when we talk about chart patterns, you know, we have to understand that they may not be a foolproof way to trade, but they could actually make the journey a little easier on you. And I'm going to go over 10 chart patterns that I think should have a place in your toolbox. Before I get started, it'd be great if you would help support these types of videos just by hitting that like and subscribe button. It's a pretty simple thing, costs you nothing, and it's a really great way to let us know that you do find this type of information helpful. Now, if you're a trader that focuses on technical analysis, you know, you've probably seen a lot of chart patterns over the years. Chart patterns, they can be used to effectively trade, of course, but it does take some screen time to quickly find them and to be able to trade them successfully. Now, let's be honest, traders like to find the best of everything, okay? But the truth is that just like everything else, there is no best chart pattern, okay? They all have a use and they all represent the underlying buying and selling pressure of whatever instrument you're trading. And as that pattern takes shape, you can see which side, the buyers or the sellers, are carrying the most weight in the recent price movement. Now, at its core, each pattern is just some take on support and resistance. And while a lot of traders are used to the horizontal levels, you're gonna find that many patterns are going to include diagonal levels using trend lines as well. The diagonal ones, to describe it, they're just kind of in tune with the rhythm of the market swings. Horizontal levels, they're just swing levels. A resistance level, that's just an area where price movement is halted to the upside. Support is just an area where price movement is halted to the downside. So as a trader, you know, you're know you gonna have to decide if you're going to use the real body or the highs and the lows of each price plot. For me, I personally use the highs and the lows, the shadows, because price did plot at those levels, right? There was meaning there. And it's also a pretty rigorous way to ensure that you're consistent every time you draw one. Now, there's gonna be times that price is going to reject right at those levels, okay? But that's more the exception than the rule. So you can expect to see some sort of price movement around these levels, okay? And that's better described as price zones instead of exact price points. Now, patterns generally come in three different categories. You have a continuation pattern. And this essentially gives a trading signal that price is going to continue in the direction of the trend. Okay, these are just pauses in price movement while that previous price move is being digested by traders. Now, there's a common belief that the longer the price builds in a continuation pattern, the further the price is going to run when that pattern eventually breaks. We have reversal patterns, which is it's a sign that the trend direction may reverse. But when you're looking for a reversal, besides just a chart pattern, you do need to have a reason to think that price is setting up a market reversal. So at those points, you really want to look for some type of price exhaustion. Uh, it's usually seen with larger than average price bars and long shadows. Then we have one called a bilateral chart pattern. And these are patterns where there's an expectation of a signal in both directions. Traders will often trade these in the direction of the trend, right? That just makes it a little bit more higher probability that it's going to continue. So to outline these patterns, I'm going to do so with both long and short variations. And I'm not going to break them down into categories. And you're probably going to find ones that speak to you. As an example, I don't read the head and shoulders pattern very well, okay? But I read flags quite easily. In fact, that head and shoulders pattern appears all throughout a trending market. And I just find them, for me, unusable. So let me also add this, that these same patterns will also appear in random price data. So if you're trading these patterns without some type of context, it's really no better than flipping a coin. Okay, I believe that if you understand the imbalance that's occurring, that's a lot more important than just finding that pattern and trading it. Okay, we're not trading the pattern, we're trading the imbalance. So we're gonna start with triangles. There are three different types of triangles that you have to pay attention to if you're interested in triangles. One is the ascending triangle. It's a bullish continuation pattern. Now the feature of this triangle is we have higher lows into a defined resistance zone. Now this pattern is gonna have at least four identifiable price points. So what's happening is while price is failing to make new highs, at label three here, buyers are stepping in at higher prices at number four. So this is a sign that the sellers can't overwhelm the buyers and higher prices are not deterring the buyers because there's still a strong demand for whatever instrument this is. The general entry trigger is a break of the resistance zone. Although there are earlier entries that could present themselves depending on how price develops in these patterns. Descending triangle. It's just the opposite. It's a bearish continuation. So it's just the opposite of the ascending. 
we're just looking for prices to make lower highs into a defined support zone. So this is a good example of chart patterns not always being clean, okay? But remember, it's the concept that we're looking at. It's the imbalance that we're trading. So the selling pressure into support, it's showing that the demand for the instrument is not as strong and traders are willing to dump their positions at cheaper prices. Like that previous triangle, traders can use a diagonal trend line to connect points two and four. And traders will look for a break of support to initiate a position to the downside. Simple, symmetrical. This pattern, it's generally considered a continuation pattern. Okay, however, it's not as strong as the other ones. Now the imbalance of buyers and sellers, it's not as prevalent because we see higher lows, we see lower highs as you see here. Now you're generally gonna see price action coiling up into the apex and that's where the two trend lines meet and eventually an explosion from the pattern. When you fade these moves out of the pattern, that's not a good thing because statistically when these break, price can go on a sustainable run. Now these patterns can form in a short time as seen on these daily charts or they can form a much larger pattern over months. Now since you do need four points to consider the pattern, you're going to need at least four periods to elapse, four days, four hours, whatever period you're using. And that has to happen before you can define the pattern. A rectangle, continuation pattern, this is so common and it can suit range traders or those looking to trade breakouts. So you're generally gonna to wanna to trade these in the direction of the trend that led into the pattern. When I see an instrument like this in an uptrend, I could trade a move off the bottom support zone and depending on the price action can hold for a break of the highs or just take profits. Again, you want to look for at least four points to define this pattern. Okay. And it doesn't have to look perfect. And this pattern, like all of them, it should jump out of you. If you have to squint to find them, it's not worth trading. Now, even if you don't trade this kind of formation, it does give information about the condition of the instrument. It's not trending. And if you're a trend trader, you'd quickly move into another selection of instruments. Well, flags comes in two variations. The best ones come after a strong move in price. Also, the higher the flag forms in an uptrend, right? A thrust, for example, the more powerful it can be. So just looking at this little graphic here, traders have bought on that thrust up, often called the flagpole. They're holding positions during that flag formation. Okay, there's not enough sellers. There's not enough shorts entering to push that price down. Therefore, the pattern is going to form near the high of that thrust up. That's a good thing. So talking about bull flags, and I'll tell you, flags are my favorite patterns, both long and short. Now, not all flags are going to have four obvious points. Okay, and I repeat, again, it's the concept. And it's the underlying pressure we are trading. Now, this flag will present profit taking between one and two buyers step in to bring the price up at number three, but the sellers, their profit taking sets back in, bringing us to number four. Okay. Now this pattern may not always be an obvious four swing pattern. So just know that bear flags, just the opposite. We have a move down in the price of the instrument, some profit taking or some buyer stepping in, but not enough to change the direction of the trend overall. So I want you to notice that this example has consecutive higher lows and higher highs as price continues to form the second part of the swing. Now the key to trading flags is when they are forming, we do not want to see momentum stepping in against the main trend direction. Okay, so you want to look for a lazy pullback and an obvious resumption of the previous trend for your entry. Now we can see a strong initial thrust into the pattern and then a lazy price action. That's fine, that does not invalidate the flag. And all that is, when you see a strong move occur and it does not entice other traders into the move, you can often expect that price to reverse. Support zone, holding or failing. Now, this is technically not a chart pattern at first, okay? And But it's probably the first thing a trader learns, support and resistance. And I'm going to include it because depending on how price reacts, it does form a tradable pattern. So when price is moving lower, it's gonna come into a price zone with further downside is halted. So at this point, traders are looking for support to break in a continuation or support to hold, which is a reversal. Again, remember, context matters. Here's three quick points. If support holds in an uptrend after a pullback in price, as an example, we would just call it a 
support holding trade and then a reversal would be a continuation of the trend if price comes to support in a downtrend support holds and then an uptrend forms then we have a reversal if price breaks support in a downtrend it's a continuation that might be semantics but to me in trading details do matter this example here it's after a big uptrend in price now many of you are saying hey well that's a triple bottom well you don't know that at point one or point two but what we do know is price reversed at number one and it bounced that's all we know at that point so now we would have potential support at that price zone and we have to see if support actually exists when or if price returns to that zone which it does. As price is approaching number two, you would look for a bounce, which would be a continuation or a break of the line and a retest to short. That'd be a reversal. Resistance. The same thoughts about context applies to the resistance area. So let's dig a little deeper into this chart because I think there's some really good lessons here. At number one, that forms our initial turning point. At number two, we would have a successful double top form. It's successful because price failed to maintain the highs as the resistance held. Once you notice that price pushed from the lows into the break at number two, subsequent to the collapse, right? So it did break out, it just didn't go anywhere. At number three, price forms a potential triple top, but there's a difference between two and three. At number three, we actually have a tight range form just under resistance. That's bullish. Statistically, we would expect resistance to fail and for price to continue to the upside. Now, if you choose to trade these structures, right, you can choose reversals if the levels hold or you can trade breakouts. You know, many traders will watch for a pullback after the breakout and look to enter on a lower time frame after a slight pause or a pullback to the breakout zone. Wedges, these patterns are different. They use diagonal trend lines and are reversal patterns. And when you draw the lines, they actually go against the main trend direction. And that confuses some traders. The rising wedge found in a downtrend, but the shape of it and the angle of the ascending lines, it fools some into thinking it's a buying opportunity. This instrument is actually in a downtrend. And although we do see strong move off the lows, price is not showing the same momentum as it heads higher. So one thing to notice is the upper trend line is sloping at less of an angle than the lower line. Now, eventually for this pattern to be successful, we wanna see price break through the lower trend line back in the direction of the downtrend. The falling wedge is a bullish reversal. We have two descending trend lines, okay? We draw those, they make up this pattern, forms in a bullish market. Now, this particular example, it's evolved already, and that's noticeable due to the lack of an anchor point at number three. However, the reversal number three, it's, it's important to note, okay? Patterns are not always gonna look perfect, okay? But they don't have to. So is the upper resistance line falling at a greater angle than the support trend line? If so, the imbalance is present in the instrument. And then we can be on the lookout for a breakout to the upside in this case. How about entering chart patterns? You know, there are a few ways you could do that. And a lot of it's gonna depend on how much confirmation you wanna see. So we can actually enter before the breakout. And we talked about this earlier when we talked about resistance zones where you'd look for price to base just under resistance or above support and enter prior to the break. But another method is to look for a failure test of the support or the resistance zone of the chart pattern. Now, using an ascending triangle as an example here, if there's a base that forms under resistance, you would just look for a test of the lows of the base and then a rejection entering early now it does increase the risk of a failure but it does have the benefit of the breakout carrying you into the profit when it works you can enter at the breakout right because there are times that breakouts succeed right away and they just run entering at the point of the break either manually or with a pending order it does give you confirmation of the break you can set a buy stop order at the resistance point on this chart example here. And you could consider that a set and forget trading style. Just make sure you find a place to set your stop. If there's a small base, as in this diagram here, you can set it below that. Some traders are going to look for increased volume at the break. And some traders will look to enter near the close of the session if price is going to close near the high of the day right? A strong close. Whatever you choose to use, just be consistent. What about a breakout pullback? Now price can break out and retrace back to test the former resistance level. When it does, you want to see it act as support when price revisits when we're looking at an upside breakout. Again, remember, support and resistance are zones of price, okay? They're not a precise point. 
Setting your stop just under the breakout point is a mistake because if price reaches back inside, that's totally normal. Traders will look to enter on the retest here and a reversal from the tested zone. Now, a knowledge of reversal candlesticks can be really helpful, okay? but essentially we're just looking for a strong bullish candlestick. The bottom line with this, you know, all technical patterns show the underlying strength in the instrument that you're trading. Now, your eyes may not see the same things as another trader. Okay, but you can make some basic rules for patterns. You know, one rule could be that you need to see four obvious swing levels, as we saw in the flag pattern. Okay, now there's a lot of different strategies that you can use with pattern. The big thing is that when you trade chart patterns, it has to be done within the context of the price movement that previously happened on the chart. If you're trading a pattern, Without an idea of what came before it, it is a recipe for disaster. A quick point about volume. Some are going to say to use it on breakouts. Others say it makes little difference. The best thing for you, test it out over a large sample of trades. Some will say heavy volume has led to greater success. Now, stats haven't ruled it one way or the other. I personally don't use volume in my own trading, and I know many traders who don't. In the end, I think you, chart patterns... If we just look at it as showing a pause in the advance of price, right? It's a consolidation. Support and resistance zones are formed, okay? And price will eventually have to break out to continue. Just keep things simple, right? You don't need to know the names of all the chart patterns to find them useful. For me, I just simply look at them as consolidations in price and I look for either the buyers or the sellers to start to take over. I keep it very, very simple. And down below in the description, I put a link to a couple of videos that can really enhance your ability to trade patterns. Hope you like this video. Any questions or comments, pop them below. I know it was a lot of information. So if you have questions, yeah, feel free to put them in there. Make sure you hit subscribe. Over 80% of our viewers aren't subscribed to our channel. So we'd just love it if you did. Talk to you soon.